All right. Second week in a row, they've just been giving us nonstop content. Let's start with maybe something a little bit more on the negative side, but it needs to be addressed, and even Kirby Smart has addressed it this past week. Last year, UGA led the NCAA in third down conversions with 55%. Now they're 107th in the country, only converting 33% of the time. Is this something to be concerned about? Yeah, and I'm not surprised that Georgia has regressed in third downs. That's just something that year to year I don't think is necessarily replicable. And Kirby Smart talked about it this week. Like, look, they got to do a better job on first and second down and not putting themselves in long distance situations. I don't think that they're going to finish the season at 107th in third down conversions. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to continue to climb and they'll find ways to scheme up and do better there. But it's not the same offense that we saw a season ago, and third down success was such an important part there as to why they were as dominant as they were. I will say I did find a lot of enjoyment in the Alabama game and watching Georgia always go for the fourth down. They had an extra down to weigh, so I thought that was a nice way to like switch the game up and see some different schemes. Yeah, and Kirby Smart traditionally not a super aggressive coach, and so I think, and you know, again, I think so much of that is dictated by the way the game had played out to that point. You're down 28 nothing, 30 to seven at halftime. But I think maybe that's something going forward where Kirby has seen the success that they have there. You have the talent advantage. Why not try and use the math advantage there as well? And maybe going forward, you do see this Georgia team maybe be a little bit more aggressive, whereas in the past, Kirby Smart has traditionally, I think, been a more conservative coach when it comes to fourth down and, you know, punting, kicking field goals, things like that. All right, so this weekend, Georgia will play in the Deep South's oldest rivalry game, but I'm not necessarily sure if it's still a rivalry now. Now, all-time record UGA leads 64-56-8, to but the last time that Auburn beat Georgia in Athens was in 2005. Don't remember it. You can go ahead and just not make the age joke. I went ahead and made it for you. But since 2005... Georgia's 15-5 and five against Auburn. Most recent loss was November 11, 2017. Georgia ends up coming back to beat Auburn in the SEC Championship a few months later. I mean, I guess you could say that in the last two decades, this game has no longer become the rivalry that it once was. I, you know, look, I don't think anyone, unless you're part of the western part of the state, sees this Georgia-Auburn rivalry as a lot. And look, Auburn, because of the turmoil, because of the coaching turnover, you know, the end of the Gus Malzahn era, Brian Harson, Hugh Freeze, they have not, I think, sustained to the level that Georgia has. Look, Tommy Tuberville was the last coach to beat Georgia in Athens, and he is now currently a United States senator. So I, I think that there's a lot that Georgia has done to, I think, take back the pull of this rivalry. But there are still some great games that Auburn has been able to win. Obviously, the prayer of Jordan Hare, that 2017 game, they just dominated that day in Jordan Hare. But they've really struggled in Athens. They haven't been able to move the ball that well. And I'm going to be really interested this Saturday what happens if Auburn's good I think it's one of those things of yeah Georgia fans will take it more seriously but when Auburn has been as mid as they have been in recent years it becomes a lot more difficult I think to sell it as this big time rivalry it's also Georgia's homecoming game is that a stab at Auburn probably in some small way but again you're limited there you want to get a lot of people to come back for this game and I think that this made a lot more sense than Mississippi State all right, well, we'll see how it all plays out, and we'll get to that next week. Let's move on to Nate Frazier, someone who made a significant impact in the Clemson game. Have not seen much of him since. Now, you got to give Georgia a little bit grace in this situation because you're not really going to utilize the run game versus Alabama, but I surely thought this was someone that we would see get more reps in the Kentucky game. Right, and I think the big thing with Nate Frazier is that Cash Jones had 27 snaps in this game. Now, Cash Jones is Georgia's best pass-blocking running back. He's also, I think, an incredible pass catcher out of the backfield, and so naturally this game just sort of suits him more. But Nate Frazier didn't play in the first half against Kentucky and then didn't play at all against Alabama. And we saw him make a noticeable impact in that game against Clemson. So I'm going to be interested going forward just what does Nate Frazier's role look like with this team? Because obviously Trevor Etienne is Georgia's best running back. He should lead this team in carries there. We heard Kirby Smart say as well that they wanted to get Branson Robinson some more carries potentially as well, had the game flow sort of dictated it there. So Nate Frazier is one of the more talented freshmen on this team. We've already seen him make a big impact, but with the way that his season is playing out and the way that Trevor Etienne and the rest of this offense has looked, I wonder just what his role is going to look like for the rest of the season. Do you think the lack of playing time is because 
the others in front of him are just simply better or because Kirby's more hesitant to play a guy who hasn't been in the program as long? I think it's both. Not it, It's not the, that he's hesitant to play someone who hasn't been in the program as long because Trevor Etienne arrived just a little bit earlier. Yeah. I think it's maybe a freshman thing, an adjustment to the college level, an adjustment to being consistent in practice all the time, being consistently great in practice. And if you're able to do that, that's how you go out there and earn those carries in games. So I think that it'll be interesting this week. Look, it's now a story of, you know, what's going on with Nate Frazier, how do they get him involved because he makes such a big impact in that first game and then you see what Ryan Williams does, you see what Zabin Brown does for Alabama. Mm -hmm. Georgia was not able to get the same level of production out of their freshman as Alabama was and that made a difference in that game. I've been waiting for this one. Let's talk about Smile Munden because he did appear in front of the media on Monday and then the injury report comes out. Smile is going to be out from the game on Saturday but for unknown reasons. What is the benefit or I guess what is the purpose of putting unknown on there? Well, they don't, you know, Georgia's not going to want to reveal anything there and I think that this is something that probably happened either on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday at practice when this injury came up. Uh, Look, you know, the fact that we got a chance to talk to Smile on Monday again, I think shows that this is an unexpected injury and it's something that is going to impact this Georgia team. I know not everyone has been thrilled with how Smile played so far this year, but he did play a key role in forcing uh, an Alabama turnover, knocking a ball loose that Dan Jackson ultimately picked off. And, and there's just something to be said about a guy who has started for three years, has played and started in a national championship game, has done a lot for your program. I know a lot of people like the upside that, say, C.J. Allen and Raylan Wilson bring, but there's just no replacing the institutional knowledge that Smile has. And so however long he's out, this is going to be an issue. And while Georgia still has a ton of talent in that inside linebacker room, we can throw Jalen Walker in there. Maybe this creates a pathway for, say, Justin Williams or Chris Cole. I, I think that this is going to be a loss that is somewhat felt by this Georgia defense. I'm going to go full Brandon Adams here. Is Mono going around the Georgia football team from sharing water bottles? I don't think that Smile Munden is out with Mono. I think I, I would rather him be out with Mono than be out with a real injury, but it does, doesn't look like the case right now. I, I mean, London Humphreys is going to miss this game this weekend as well. And so Mono, you know, again, that's, you know, look, I'm no expert in Mono, but uh, from people that have had it, that can be a long-term injury. Yeah, some say up to upwards of six months. Um, all right, I'm going to end with this. I can just, I can't even, I'm not even looking at Connor, and I know he's got a smile on his face right now because of what I'm about to say. I'm going to take some accountability here, but I'm also going to give some credit to myself as well while we do this because I do deserve a little credit. Here's the thing. I have been very adamant that Georgia cannot have a perfect regular season. When I looked at the schedule, the only loss that made sense to me was a Georgia loss at Texas. I just wasn't sold yet on the fact that Jalen Milrow could work in a Kalen DeBoer to offense so quick. So I just didn't think that the loss came at Alabama. I maybe should have known better. And now my mind has changed. But that's just because I thought they would lose one game of the regular season. And although it did not come to Texas, they did lose a game. I mean, maybe I'm psychic, maybe I have ESPN or something, but uh, now that Georgia has taken the loss at Alabama, I don't think that they're going to take a loss at Texas. I think they'll win every game from here on out. You can come for me in the comments. I've already had a long self-reflection with myself, so there's nothing that you can say that will hurt my feelings, but that's how I feel moving forward, and that's where I stand on things now. Snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> No, we're making Mean Girls reference, not Office references today. Yeah, look, uh, it's a Georgia team that, they're, if they're going to win a national title, I think they're going to have to run the table. Uh, you know, if they lose to, say, Texas uh, in, in October at home to Tennessee, uh, that probably tells you this can still be a very good Georgia team. They can accomplish a lot of things, maybe even get, say, a semifinal or a national championship. But I think if you see them drop games against the Texas, against the Tennessee, this might not be the same level of caliber team that Georgia has been in recent years. Mm -hmm.